impressive. Yeah, I mean, Steve, these things idle at almost what a Winston Cup car That's turns right. wide open. I think they idle at about 7,000 RPMs, don't they? Yeah, and the pit stops, you want to get the thing to tick over at about 10,000 RPM to keep the hydraulic pump working well, because the hydraulics control the throttle mechanism. It also controls the gear selector mechanisms as well. It's the same system that used to control the active suspension, but of course that's been banned by the FIA. But you need to keep the revs up in the pit stop so the hydraulics work. Otherwise, you click and the clutch fails on you. Now, you open the door, I'm going to walk through it. You mentioned pit stops. We're not going to see a pit stop here today, but I've always been jealous of a Formula One pit stop. When we have a Winston Cup pit stop, we have seven guys. No more. At a Formula One pit stop, it looks like a large family reunion when they go to service that car. Uh, an average of about 17 people. 17 Only to, 17? 17 to 18 <laughs> people take here. part. you got to practice just to stay out of each other's way on a Formula One pit stop. <laughs> yeah, it can get a little bit crowded down there, but about 17 to 18 people. Remember, you've got three people on each corner. You've got two to three guys doing the refueling. Front jack, rear jack, lollipop guy controlling the whole thing. And somebody else normally trying to keep the car stable by holding the roll hoop when it's on the jack. So there's a lot of people doing a lot of synchronized work. Do you understand anything you talk about roll hoop or anything? <laughs> a little bit. I've done okay, some for okay. one. <laughs> now, and already you can see the difference, I think, already with Jeff. Much oh, more yeah. on the pace. I mean, he's still going well under race pace, but he looked down there. The confidence is building already. And this would be one of the... The few Formula One tracks, Steve, that you guys go to where there's no really elevation changes. Most of your, your tracks have elevation changes. Yeah, there are a lot of elevation changes. I mean, certainly the great circuits like Spa, for example, is very uphill and down dale. This very flat, of course, the F1 infield section built right in the inside of the oval. But technically speaking, I find this track a lot of fun because you've got that great contrast between the long straightaway section that you just saw now and as we come to the end of the short back straight, the Holman Boulevard, now back into the tight infield section again. So there Oops. is your classic example of what you do when you come off the straight to set the car up for the tight infield section. You've got to get the downforce on the car to make the car stick to the track going around the, t around the corners. You want to get the downforce off the car for the long straight. It's got to be a compromise because you cannot adjust the wings once the car's moving. Just last week at Pocono, your partner DW said, no matter how long you do this, Larry, you always learn something new. And I can remember, Steve, when we did the first Formula One Grand Prix here in Indianapolis, these teams with their hundreds of millions of dollars in budget, and all the computer simulations and the wind tunnel work that goes on 24-7, they came here with a setup that proved to be quite a bit off the mark from what they needed. Yeah. This is the problem right here, this long, long front straight down into turn one. He's going to see Jeff now hit the brakes. You want to maximize, optimize the straight line speed down there, like you're saying, 200, 215 miles an hour. But you want the downforce on the car here. So what do you do? You've got to compromise. Well, Ferrari found that they were going faster, Bob, in that first race by taking wing off the car, mm -hmm. maximizing that straight speed down the straight. BAR found they were working exactly the opposite direction. Villeneuve saying the more wind we put on, the more stable the car became, the lap time dropped again. So right, different ends of the spectrum. We've seen a little vibration from our onboard cameras. We're not using the FIA, well, we're using their mounts, but we have our own onboard cameras, and you can see that vibration from these incredible engine revs. That's probably pretty much what the driver's eyeballs are doing as well. Let's yeah. get down to Ralph Shaheen. Well, we're down here with Juan Montoya, who's got some of uh, Jeff Gordon's crew behind him here. You're watching on the big screen. What do you think, Juan? I mean, I'm pretty impressed, you know, to get, you know, he's in the pace pretty quickly and, you know, the cars are pretty tough to drive and he looks quite comfortable in it. It's really amazing, you know, I've never been in a Formula 1 car and he's doing really good. We saw him go off in the one corner and, and the guys in the booth were talking about how difficult it is to figure out the turning areas of the racetrack and how to set the car up for that. How difficult is it to, when you first get in the car, to acclimatize yourself to that and to the racetrack itself as we've seen with Jeff? Uh, it was it wasn't that difficult. It was a lot of fun, and and it, you know just the car is so good, you know that it's very predictable and everything. It's just so much fun. What's going to be the toughest thing for him in this car? Braking to really get to the braking point because you know he you know I, he told me you got to brake like into 250 and the F1 would brake about the 50. How yeah. long did it take you to get acclimatized to the braking? Then? Uh, no, it's a bit weird because you brake and. It's like when the F1, you probably when you lift, you know, because there was so much time for the cars go there. When you lift, you lose some speed that it's like just lifting. Like, but you're trying to slow down the car quick enough to make the corner. It's pretty exciting. All right, Bob, everybody watching the big monitor. Yeah, I'll bet they are. Welcome back live to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. We just got a fist pump out of the Williams BMW from Jeff Gordon.
We welcome you back to Trading Paint. <laughs> Jeff Gordon and Juan Pablo Montoya trading race cars. Is this a publicity stunt? You bet it is. And we hope you've got your tickets for the 10th Brickyard 400 coming up the weekend of August 3rd and the 4th U.S. Grand Prix in Indianapolis the weekend of September 28th. There's the phone number, 1-800-822-INDY, I-N-D-Y, to get your tickets. Is this kid having fun or what? Oh, boy, he is <laughs> impressive. This is, I mean, it's Jeff Gordon. I mean, we should expect this. But boy, oh boy, he has taken to this like a veteran. I was asking the mechanics how comfortable Jeff was in the car because it's normal procedure for a new driver to have a new carbon fiber seat made molded to his, uh, to his contours of his backside and his back to make sure he's absolutely 100% comfortable. And Larry, how much uh, seat fitting goes off in the cup car championship? I'm, I'm talking about the comparison because the mechanic said straight away, Jeff, Jeff was fine. We gave him one of Montoya's seats. He didn't complain. We said that was fine. How was the pedal positions? He said he was comfortable. We didn't adjust them for him. I said, did you give him the option? We never said anything to him. We were comfortable. We walked away from him. <laughs> said it was fine. Well, there's a lot of work that goes into the, the, the cockpit of Winston Cup car because what you have to remember, they're in there for four and 500 mile races, mm -hmm. you know, three and a half, four hours. And of course, over the last two years, we've see, seen so many safety innovations with put them in that cocoon as we call it with the yeah. headrest and and the head neck restraint devices a lot of things have come along just in the last two years let's get down to ralph well i know he doesn't want to crawl out of there any sooner than he has to he's debriefing with his own crew team okay what'd you think oh my god <laughs> <laughs> that is the most incredible experience i've ever had in my life uh it was so so different unique at the beginning i i i actually it looked like i went in too deep in that one corner went in the grass but i actually didn't go in deep enough or, or I didn't get on the brakes hard enough and, and I jabbed the brakes and the back end just turned on me. So, uh, you know, just learning to use the curbs and how much you can get on the throttle. I mean, that traction control is a beautiful thing. <laughs> <laughs> like, so, so, hey, Mike, no, no, so we, how much we'd love to have that over in our, uh, <laughs> our, in our uh, but, uh, what, what an, you know, actually through the fast corners, amazing how much grip it had. I mean, the G-forces that my head took, unbelievable. On braking, I could feel me get lightheaded because so much blood rushed to the front of my head. I never experienced that before, but you know, when you learn how the traction control works, you can just lay in the throttle so hard. And the only other problem I had is that, you know, they tricked me. They've, they've got it where it automatically goes up in gear, but I have to manually do it down in gear. So I'm so used to it going up in gears, I'd like, oh, I forgot I got a downshift. <laughs> 